Australia? Here we come! <laughs> sheep, diamonds, coral, sheep, koalas, and more sheep! <laughs> Australia, the beautiful! I've said it before and I'll say it again. Oh, choose me, honey, please! Hold on to your hats, we're off and away! Are you sitting comfortably? <laughs> then, when it's all ready, we'll begin! <laughs> Once long ago, in the dusty outback of Australia, there lived a band of bunyips who ate unsuspecting human beings that had fallen for their silly tricks. The leader of this horde was a mischievous bunyip named Yeri, who grew tired of eating thin, stringy people. Listen up, dunderheads! It's time for a change! Let's go raid the ghost gum trees! Yeah! Off shot the bunyips to a grove of trees where the little stingless bush bees had a hive full of honey. Gorging themselves, the bunyips emptied the hive, and with blotched and sticky faces, they turned toward their watering hole, which they referred to as a billabong. Ah! Gary! There's no water here! How are we gonna wash up? Yeah, you blockhead! Noodle face! You stupid yip! Shut up! barked Yeri as she racked her brain for a way out of this mess. Then she heard a strange noise. There, across the billabong, slept the rain spirit. He could fill it up in no time. Yeri raced over to the sleeping ancestral spirit and shook him. Hey! You big bag of wind, wake up! But nothing roused the spirit, and the impetuous bunyip soon resorted to drastic measures. Grabbing a deadly tiger snake by its tail, she threw it at the rain spirit. <sniffs> Landing in his ample lap, the snake bit the rain spirit on his ghost-like tummy. Oh! cried the spirit, waking up in pain and surprise. The flesh around the bite turned blue, and the rain spirit writhed in agony. The bunyips turned on Yeri. You dipstick! Look what you've done! You better find an antidote, quick! Yeri searched high and low, but alas, she couldn't concentrate. Antidote! Antidote! What's an antidote look like, anyway? Someone here by the billabong can help Yeri find an antidote. Do you know who it is? Wait now. There's no antidote here. Just move along. Not me. I saw what she did to my cousin. Did you see that? Yes, I did. Can you imagine? No, I can't. <laughs> she heard the spirit. That's a big no-no. Hop to, who are you? I've been helpful before, haven't I? Sometimes, you must dig deep for answers. Psst! Bring it! I got an idea. What? Who said that? The voice of a tunnel-web spider is quite soft. It was a moment before Yeri realized the spider was clinging to her forehead. You're not gonna find an antidote in Australia. The only place they got that stuff is in India. India? But that's across the ocean! So, come on! The little spider scurried over to his tunnel. I've been to India lots of times. Here, follow me! And with that, the spider disappeared down the hole, followed by Yeri, whose personal motto, like all bunyips, was Leap before you look! But the buoyant bunyip soon regretted her haste. For spider tunnels are dark and deep and filled with the most ghostly noises. What, what, what's that sound? Ah, the, uh, the ancestral beings. They live down here, you know, waiting to rise again. Just be nice to them. They'll be nice to you. The basic rule of thumb worked for the spider, but the bunyip was another matter, for she had harmed the rain spirit and his underground brothers were angry. Yeah, yeah. 
Look out! The spider cried as a snarling wombat spirit chased them up one tiny corridor and down another. Finally, Yeri spotted daylight. This way! Come on! As they scrambled out of the hole, the wombat's paw caught one of the spider legs. Ah, oh, help! The spider cried as the wombat spirit dragged him down the hole and back under the earth. Spider? <laughs> spider! <laughs> My one true friend! Tasting grief for the very first time, the bunyip soon fell into a depressed stupor. What am I doing? Where am I? The bunyip looked dully around, wondering where she had emerged. Do you know where Yeri is now? Can you help her find out? My swimming companions a whiz at geography. Don't have a clue, I'm just passing through. <laughs> We're definitely north of Bolivia! Where are we? Uh, it starts with an M, that's all I'll say. My, my, my. Must we ask so many questions? Hi! Hello there. I have no idea what you mean. <laughs> we are in North America. Are we not? We most certainly are. <laughs> Mexico, I believe. Yes, yes. Mooed the manatee gently as she swam towards shore to get a closer look at the dirty faced bunyip. Is that a beard you're wearing? <laughs> Whatever makes you look so sad. Don't laugh. I just lost my best friend. Oh, <laughs> let's see a happy face. <laughs> happy face. <laughs> now, the manatee had irked the bunyip which is not recommended. Yeri picked up a long vine that lay at her feet and, smiling like a maniac, walked out into the waves. You wanna see my happy face? Here it is! Lashing out, the bunyip lassoed the sea cow and hopped onto her back. Yee-haw! Ride em, cowgirl! The poor cow tried to throw Yeri off, but to no avail, and off they rode, bucking and screaming towards India. Let's see who gets the last laugh now, you big old cow! But the manatee had her revenge, for as soon as the bunyip was asleep, she slipped the rope from her neck and with extreme force flung Yeri out of the water and well into India. <laughs> and good riddance. <laughs> ah! oh! Again. Yeri found herself a stranger in a strange land. This one, even stranger than the last. If I ever make it out of this overgrown terrarium, I am never leaving the billabong again! She proclaimed, smashing her way through the foliage and into the Monkey King's jungle court where his majesty awaited her. A visitor! Let's boogie! Grabbing Yeri, the Monkey King swung her this way and that. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, but, an antidote? A what? Snake bite? Oh, well, for that, you've got to go right to the source. See ya! And before you can say step ball change, the Monkey King was back on the throne, assiduously ignoring his bewildered guest. Yeri pondered the last words of her host. I must go right to the source? Hmm. Do you know what the Monkey King meant? Our sticky bunyip could use your help, but look out for the big mean rhino. Oh dear, poor little thing. She's got to go to the source. Oh, no, 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 no. Not here, not here. Don't be scared. You must face your demons. Well, well, well. I see you've decided to come right to the source. Hmm? Uh, yes? piped the bunyip as the cobra encircled himself around her middle and squeezed. You see the rain spirits been <clears throat> bit and we must hurry. <clears throat> really? Well then, 
Lay this on the wound, then it will suck the venom out. Yeri grabbed the paste and raced through the jungle, tripping on some undergrowth and landing face first in the dirt. But there, right in front of her nose, was a hole in the ground. She eyed her best travel option with suspicion. Anything could be down that stinking hole! Anything is! She took a wild leap and dove into the ground, crawling on hands and knees through a maze of tunnels. She dared not look behind her. But it wasn't what was behind her that should have worried the bunyip. Turning a corner, she stopped suddenly. In front of her lay an angry wall of ancestors. There you are. We've been expecting you. Please! <laughs> Please! I'll never... I promise! And miraculously, they all disappeared. Yeri turned round to find out why. There stood the most imposing spirit of her old friend, the spider. Quick! They'll be back soon! Up that way in your home! Spider! How can I- Go! Just go! And the bunyip skirted up the last few meters of topsoil, popping her head up beside the billabong. Yeri ran straight to the ailing spirit and spread the thick paste on his wound. While the antidote worked its magic, she turned her attention to her band of followers as they stood with their faces glued together. What happened to you guys? She asked. Learning that while she was gone, the bunyips had grown impatient and decided to lick the messes off each other's faces. But without water, the honey glued each tongue wherever it landed. I've been awful! Really, really, really awful! moaned the bunyips. And at that very moment, it started to rain. And every bunyip's tongue loosened and soon found its way back to a grateful bunyip mouth. And they all turned to watch the rain spirit, perfectly healed, fill the billabong with a steady stream of water from the blue Australian sky. Yippee! For the bunyip! Who shall we visit now? Oh, nice pickin'. Nice pickin' indeed. Mix and match is just coming up, champ. Hold tight. <laughs> Good eye, Koba. <laughs> That's one way to say hello, sport, in Australia. We're mixing and matching paintings like the Aborigines make. Aborigines were the first folk in Australia and have been here for 50,000 years. And if you hear a few funny-sounding words, well, that's strine. And it's how some of the local Aussies speak nowadays. Go! Good on ya! Here's the first animal for you in this box. You drag it to where its painting is. A crocodile. A kookaburra. Nicely done. A goanna. Only four left. A koala. A platypus. Two left, nearly there. A barracuda. A wombat. 100% correct! Well done, you! You got them all! Having a bonza time? Great! Let's play again! You're no drongo! You're ready for the hard round! Go! A snake! A goanna! A barracuda! A platypus! A kangaroo! A turtle. One left. A wombat. Way to go, pro. Wowzers, you did it. Staying down up. See ya, Chook. We'll come back soon. That's some collection of animals, Chester Ascarald. How about we look in on someone else now? Okay, let's go. Hey, <laughs> wait a sec. We'll be playing in no time. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> we are at a sheep station in the Australian Outback. Woo! <laughs> the Outback is the middle of this really, really big country. 
Yep. Not many people live in the outback. Nope. But there are lots and lots of unusual animals. Yeah, honest. <laughs> Click on my belly and we'll meet some of them. Whoopee! Oh, that trough of water is for thirsty animals. Frill neck lizard! <laughs> Wanna see it run? <laughs> it's pretty funny. <laughs> This is an echidna, <laughs> an egg-laying spiny anteater mammal. Whew, that's a mouthful. <laughs> I told you some of these animals were unusual. Frilly lizard! <laughs> that's to make him seem bigger than he is, yeah, <laughs> when he's scared. Termite mound. Ooh, <laughs> that's creepy. <laughs> Termites live there. But who else? Hmm? Oh, a wombat. <laughs> kind of cute, huh? <laughs> he likes to bury himself. Ooh, strange. Boomerang. <laughs> kind of curvy stick for rounding up animals. <laughs> and guess what? It comes back when you throw it. Yep. Hey, a bouncy kangaroo. Haha, <laughs> cool. Hey, he likes to box. Kookaburra. <laughs> Funny name. <laughs> Wanna sit in the tree? <laughs> Yeehaw! <laughs> Mr. Cowboy. <laughs> he likes to shear sheep. Oh, a scorpion. <laughs> Watch out. Ah, get away with ya. Bandicoot. <laughs> That's a funny word. <laughs> it's kind of like a rat. Ah, get away with ya! Oh, a water-holding frog. <laughs> she comes out of the ground to look for water. <laughs> She's kinda cute, huh? Wanna herd something with the sheepdog? Whoa! <laughs> that frog is storing water for when it doesn't rain. <laughs> yep, she can live off that water underground for a few years. <laughs> I'd like to be her friend in a drought. Oh, yeah. Dingo! <laughs> a wild dog. <laughs> and uh, sometimes a sheep stealer. Ooh, look out. A sheep dog. <laughs> He's a good sheep herder. Yeah, nice doggy. <laughs> a horse. <laughs> The cowboy's horse, I bet. Come on, girl. Come on, girl. Giddy up. Boom. <laughs> 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 Nate, a straight boomerang. <laughs> I can't play on an empty stomach! Oh, please! Hmm. 
Hey, you wanna leave the Outback? Okay, let's find the others. Come on. Just looking at the Outback makes me thirsty. Maybe we could find somewhere cooler, eh? Oh, bless you, darling. You chose me. Oh, I'm very touched. <coughs> darling, you just sit tight while I get my things together for this. Australia's Great Barrier Reef is just bursting with some of the world's wildest creatures. So grab your snorkel gear, darling, and let's all play. Velma's Fact or Fib. Go on and pick a fact, and we'll take a look at what's down under. But I gotta warn you, one or two of these aren't facts at all, just big old Velma-style fibs. Now you decide which is which. You ready? Ew! Don't he look tasty? Now that there is a crown of thorns starfish, and he's poisonous as all get out. You know what he loves to eat more than anything in the world? The reef itself. Just gobbles that coral right up. Now you tell me, is that a fact, or is that a big old fib? Oh, oh dear, I wasn't fooling this time, darling. These starfish actually suck out all the tiny living things inside the reef's coral skeleton, destroying them and the reef as it goes along. See that beautiful Australian beach? Why, the parrotfish actually helps make that sand. Yeah! It uses its beak-like mouth to nibble on coral, and after all the rock passes through its system, it, uh, well, it comes out the other end as bits of white sand. Now, does that sound like fact or a fib? You are absolutely right, yeah! There really are parrotfish, and they really do eat coral. Fact, they eat so much coral that one little parrotfish can poop out one ton of limestone a year. <laughs> now that's a whole lot of sand. My goodness! Here we have your green sea turtle. These gals spend their lives at sea and only come ashore to lay eggs. Now, they're so persnickety about where to lay those eggs, they'll sometimes swim up to 1,200 miles just to find the perfect beach. Now, what's your verdict, honey? Am I factin' or fibbin'? <laughs> Correcta mundo, lamb chop! And when those mama turtles do find just the right beach, they go ashore and lay up to 200 eggs in one sitting. Pick a fact. This here is what you call your Portuguese man o' war. You see, that big thing sticking out of the water is filled with air to help him float. And he drags along those huge poisonous tentacles to catch fish and other sea animals. Now what do you say? Is that a fact? Or is that a fib? Oh. Whoops, oh dear. You may not believe this, but it's true. And not only that, these man o' wars shoot out teeny tiny barbs from their tentacles that are so poisonous they could kill a person. Or a pig, for that matter. Go on and pick a fact. These fellas are called sponges. They swim around in big schools, and they act like a natural car wash for fish who happen to swim through them. Wiping them down, cleaning their scales. Oh, most fish come out of a school of sponges squeaky clean. Now give me your opinion. Is that a fact, or is that a fib? Oh, oh honey, I got gotcha you this time. Sponges are animals, but they don't swim in schools, and they don't clean other fish. No, no, they live attached to rocks on coral reefs, and feed themselves by filtering tiny bits of food from all the water that passes through them. Pick this good looker's called a sea cucumber. And if I were a fish, I'd think twice about going after him. Cause you know how a sea cucumber protects itself? By spitting out its guts at an attacker. Now what do you think, pumpkin? Am I serving you up a fact or a fib? Oh, oh it does sound like a fib, don't it? But it's not. Why the sea cucumber's guts even look like spaghetti and are covered with poison to confuse and entangle its attacker. Stranger still, it actually grows a whole new stomach once it gets away. Click on any picture and off we go. Oh, glory, oh my, oh my, a reef full of facts and I'm all washed up. So what do you say let's head for the beach and dry off and join the others? Velma, your knowledge knows no boundaries. Okay, my friend, please choose another activity, eh? 
All right, let's check them out. Hang on, please. We're just getting ready. Hmm? Some days I like to imagine I'm a different animal, and there's plenty to choose from in Australia. Would you rather be a cockatoo or an emu? Or maybe you would like to be a kangaroo. There's lots of funny animals out in the bush who live in the land down under. Would you rather be a wallaby or a wombat? Or maybe a koala? What do you think of that? Perhaps the crocodile is the one that makes you smile. He lives in the land down under. On the land in the a hole or up a tree We're living in the land down under Where did the others go? Monkey Let's go Sue. see! That was a visual treat beyond compare Now, maybe you can choose another Oz adventure for us Let's consult the map That's the clever way to travel if we went everywhere at once, we'd be in Mex Giptralia, or Perosh China Way, or Gapan. <laughs> but for now, let's choose one. This grid shows all of our world tour activities. A star indicates where we've been already today. You can choose any one of the activities here. Click on it to go straight there. <laughs> That was mind-boggling. And now, select somewhere to take us, huh? Are you all finished? If you are, choose the red quit button once again, just so we can be sure. Or, uh, hey, click anywhere else for, uh, more fun and games with us. Yeah, come on. Goodbye, my friend. <laughs>